All right, this is a follow-up to that uh, Ortor rotary assembly for the uh, engraving. And I um, finally got it running now. And one of the things that I did, I made a couple changes to it. But one of them was I printed out some nut plates and clamp plates for the actual um, roller assembly there. I, I tried them the first time, and I had a new cure that I loaded, and it just didn't cut slice right, so I had to print them a second time. But... Now these are the parts, a couple of uh, little plates to capture the nuts and a couple of little clamp plates to keep things from moving when the screw heads tighten. And they're just going to go on that adjustable roller and you know there you can see what they look like. Just two little 3D, actually four little 3D printed parts. And I'll try to get them up on Thingiverse once I uh, get a chance. And they just... Uh, you know, they're just going to make that a little bit easier for me when I want to move the roller around and stuff. Because I, I just couldn't hold everything from moving and um, get my wrench down underneath that, like, up above that extrusion there to, you know, hold the nuts from spinning. And there's one that I put together already on the one side, you can see. And this is how they go together. The nuts, um, one of them slides right in there. It's a little bit loose, and the other one's a little bit tight. So, you know, nothing's really perfect with 3D printing, even though they're drawn the, the same size. So you got to push one, and uh, the other one slips right in. So what I decided to do was just to... Um, see, i got to pull that tight one in with the screws. So I started to put the screws in, and I decided to just put a drop of super glue gel on the two side two flats of the nut one on one little drop on each side 180 degrees apart and i got my fingers in the way there you can't see it but that way once the nuts are pulled in i figured they'd stay in there and um you know be no chance of ever losing them so it's kind of like a permanent little assembly so i just put drop of super glue on there and just pulled them down in there and let them sit for 30 seconds and uh you know they'll never come out now so that's good and it, I didn't have any Phillips head screws that were the right size. These are an M5 screw, so I do have to uh, replace these flat heads with Phillips someday, too. And there's a little clamp plate that uh, goes on the outside. And the screws go through that first. And when you tighten the screws up, it keeps the um, screw head from trying to shift the assembly up as you tighten them. And then they go through that bracket, and uh, the nut plates go on the inside there. And, you know, this is just a little thing that's going to make it easier for me over time to uh, to move things around and adjust, make adjustments. So, uh, you know, I figured it was worthwhile to do now because, you know, I did have a problem keeping those rollers parallel just using the screw heads alone. So that's what it looks like, and it just uh, slides down on the, over those slots in the side. There you can see that one plate stays on the outside. And the nut plate goes on the inside. And then you just have to push them down so that they're, um, you know, all the way down in the bottom of those slots. And it turns out the rollers come out parallel every time. And, you know, no nuts to hold or anything else. So this, this you know, I think it's a better way to do it. I went back and I got the uh, I've got them both in there now and you can see uh, you know you don't have to worry about holding anything and I just have to find some Phillips head screwdrivers to make them or screws to make them match everything else so then I did uh, I did fire this up you can see I did one test sample but I'm going back through it here now that I got these parts made and then I, I had a case where I want to do some uh, basket handles, and they're longer than the, that six inches there, or whatever it is between them. And see how that belt's in the way there, and it hits that belt? So I went on uh, Amazon, and I searched for a little bit longer belt, and I wound up finding a lot longer. It looks like there's a big jump between the two sizes. I'm still looking for a little bit shorter one, but this is the belt that I purchased. I'll put a link down below. And what this allows me to do is remove that exit, that first belt. And for this, at least for this size round, this belt is a little long for some of the other adjustments. But um, for the size that I'm going to be doing mostly now, this belt, I'm going to put it on like that. And you can see how it drops down. The adjustment is between the rollers now. So I can uh, actually put any any length part on there that I want. 
see it can overhang now and not hit the belt so that was just another little you know modification that i feel is really worthwhile for these two because um well with my plans i plan to do things that are you know a foot two feet long and i got everything all tightened up there and uh you know there you can see it that'll work with pretty much any length as long as you set, get the center of gravity in the center of it so, you know, that kind of solves the two problems that I was dealing with. And uh, now it's time to go and uh, show you how I hooked it up to the machine. Now, I did have a viewer email me the instructions, which I was having a hard time. I couldn't get into Dropbox and um, I couldn't open them on my tablet and stuff. So I did get the instructions and they are fairly straightforward and would have saved me some headaches. But... You have to make sure that you um, just follow them carefully. They did a good job of explaining everything. And go into the um, GRBL, the laser GRBL, and actually turn off the homing. But I'll get into that in a second. So, you know, basically I pulled that cable out of the bottom motor there, plug the extension that comes with this in, and then you just plug this motor in. And you're ready to run there. No, nothing else to change. I do have everything set up properly uh, to work. And then I went back and centered the laser over my workpiece and made sure I had the 55 millimeter focus length in there first. And I'll set my t set your table elevation to that. And then I had to get the roller lined up with the um, the arm on the engraver. So I had a nice flat, straight piece of plywood, and I figured that would be my easiest way to do it now. So I just clamped that on the arm there, so I'd have a nice reference edge. And then just use that to, to tweak that roller assembly, just so that the face of that roller was, uh, you know, perfectly parallel to it. And I will engrave lines on the, my table in the future, but for now I did this. And then I just wanted to clamp on a piece to reference against in case I bumped anything or you know, had to push it back. So now I know I've got that uh, the laser travel parallel to the roller. And I've got the focus distance set. Uh, I'm just going to go back and uh, take that laser and bring it out. And I'm using a straight edge here, vertical. And just try to eyeball it so you're right on the center of the, um, the part that you're going to be engraving. And once I did that, I actually took some of these little clothespin type clamps and just put them on the extrusion up there just to to keep it from moving because I have a habit of bumping into things and stuff. And, you know, this will keep everything, uh, you know, all set in place. So now if you haven't built any kind of an adjustable table or anything, you're going to need spacers under it to get it up off the table. And you may be able to build this registration right into them. But there I am, you know, pretty much all set to go now and um, just had to focus the laser when I fired it up. And you have to make sure that you disable those home switches. And I'll show you that I put a little keyboard shelf on my, my uh, laser cart here. It bent up a couple little steel brackets, so I got a keyboard and mouse shelf there. And I finally got that monitor, cheap monitor mount that I found on Amazon and you know, I got my monitor on there. So this is a totally self-contained unit now for running both lasers. And when I do the longer parts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run them that way. I'm going to turn the roller around the other way. And then I'm going to plug into that top motor there and uh, run it run it that way. So now I've, uh, you know, pretty much got it all set to go and do a little burn and... What I did is I just fired up laser GRBL and uh, turned the dot on there to focus it. And I just called up one of my, you know, the artwork that I've been burning on a lot of things lately. And, uh, you know, got that all set to go. And, you know, I made sure I did uh, disable the homing. And then I went back and just did a frame. And it does a frame just like you're on a flat surface, but it rolls it. And then I just went back through and I hit the run button. And, uh, you know, now this is, you know, pretty much, well, actually it's my second time running this. But um, you can see it's really simple. And when you lay out your artwork, it's on the, it's not working off the radius. It's working off the circumference, the travel of this unit. So, you know, basically you have to make sure that you're, um, if you're going to do a full 360 on it, you have to make sure you uh, figure out that circumference and, you know, use that for the artworks. And I haven't tried that yet. Um, 
I'll be doing that in the future but for now I just wanted to show you you know how easy this is to set up and get running and that all their um, travel is the same as the um, the standard y-axis so you really don't have to do anything else in the software but disable the uh, homing so here it is you can see it's burning just as if it's uh, burning on a flat piece X and Y and um, no matter what size piece it is as long as you have it focused properly it's gonna you know work just like this so you know that's a real nice thing and it's um, it's only going to be good for things that are perfectly round like this too so I'm trying to figure out how to make some adapters to um, handle like spindles and stuff like that too which I'll probably be 3d printing in the future but you know I just thought I'd show you how you know how easy it was to get this up and running and you know once you get the instructions just follow them and uh, there you can see it uh, well, it's out of focus but there you can see it did a did a really nice job uh, with no fussing or anything else and um, you know I'm real happy with the results now now with that laser GRBL you have to be careful that your um, your artwork is inside the piece otherwise it will just uh, try to frame and uh, hit the end of it so you know you really do have to watch it with that but um, basically uh, this is how I got it running it didn't take that long once I had the instructions and stuff and had everything assembled and it fits real nice on that little table that I built for it and uh, just make sure that you do follow the instructions there for disabling the uh, limit switches just change it from a 1 to a 0 in the setup there and it's all explained very well and probably the future videos on this I will be doing in light burn I just wanted to show you um, you know, I know some people still use this laser GRBL, so I wanted to show you using that. And you can see how nice it is to have that cart with the two lasers on it and everything movable so I can uh, roll it around. And next thing I'm going to do is actually build a, um, a exhaust fan for it. So these are just a couple little mods I did to it to, you know, make it easier for me to use and to fit my applications. And I'm not sure if, you know, everybody needs them, but I thought I'd share them anyway. And yeah, sure it would have been nice to have those couple pages of instructions included in the box for, you know, when I opened it up and first started putting it together. I can't see how companies worry about a couple pieces of paper that are recyclable, but yet they'll fill the box up full of that uh, nasty foam that's not recyclable. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.